Going to the set of questions for the A-Level Chemistry Multiple Choice Practice Playlist. So this is the fifth one now for the organic questions. Remember, there's a separate playlist for inorganic and physical chemistry. Hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you consider subscribing to the channel? And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So there's 2-methylbutane. So if this reacts with chlorine by radical substitution and we are limited to mono substitution, there's only one chlorine gone on. So how many different structural isomers can we have? Well, the chlorine can go on these carbons here. So they're equivalent to each other. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So C was the answer. Number two, so there's the structure of 2,4-dimethylhex2ene. So we've got to decide what type of stereoisomerism it can show. So can it show EZ? Well, it can't because this carbon of the CC double bond has got the same group attached to it. So we've got two methyl groups there. So the EZ options are out. Can it show optical isomerism? Yes, it can, because that's a chiral carbon there. So optical only, so option B. Moving on to number three, so to calculate the number of particles, so in this case it's carbon atoms, we need to work out the moles of carbon atoms and multiply that by Avogadro's number. So the first thing we need to do is calculate how many moles of each of these we've got, so that's just mass over MR. Then we need to multiply by the number of carbon atoms in the molecule, see which um, set of moles is the largest, and that's going to have the most carbon atoms. So there's all my mass over MR, so that's how many moles of molecules we've got. Multiply by the number of carbons in the molecule, that's how many moles of carbon atoms we've got, and you can see the biggest number is this 1.81, so C is the answer. Moving on to number four, so there's two we can rule out straight away, A and B, because they've made hydrogen, not H2O. So basically, it's just how many uh, moles of oxygen do we need to balance the equation. So we've got um, four oxygens in CO, five in H2O, so nine oxygens. Uh, there's one in the alcohol, so we need another eight. So it was C with the 4O2. Moving on to number five, so which is the correct statement? So in the mechanism, uh, a CN minus ion accepts an electron pair. No, that's wrong because CN minus ions are nucleophiles. They are, are electron pair donors, so they don't accept electron pairs. So A is wrong. The mechanism is electrophilic addition. Well, no, it's nucleophilic because um, the CN minus ion, as I've just said, is a nucleophile. The organic product has one chiral centre, right? So we're going to need to draw up the organic product of this reaction. So there's the organic product there, and we've actually got two chiral centres in this because that's chiral, and so is that one. So C isn't correct, so it's got to be D. And if you count up all the carbons, hydrogens, nitrogen and oxygen, you do get C7H11NO. Number six is testing our knowledge of alkaline hydrolysis of esters. So there's just a reminder that that reaction generates a carboxylate and an alcohol. So we can rule out C and D straight away because neither of these reactions have made the alcohol. So you can see A and B both generate alcohols, but which one's got the carboxylate in? B has. So B is the answer. Question seven, so menthol is an alcohol, and when it's heated with an acid catalyst, it's going to be dehydrated. So we're gonna lose the OH group and a hydrogen from an adjacent carbon atom. I know there's two hydrogens there, but I'm just showing one um, for the purposes of the video. So a double bond could form here, and you can see we haven't got anything in here with a double bond in that position. We could also generate a double bond there and there it is in A, so A was the answer. Moving on to number eight, so this is testing our shapes and angles knowledge. So which of these has got a bond angle of approximately 
120 degrees it's this one here because around this second carbon we've got three bonding regions equal repulsion trigonal planar 120 degree angle so see there number nine which is not a reduction so it's testing our knowledge of reaction types so a is the reduction of a nitro group this no2 group has been reduced to the nh2 group b is the reduction of the nitrile group to an amine group and d is the reduction of a ketone to um, a secondary alcohol so c wasn't a reduction reaction that's just the substitution of um, a halogen for an amine group. Number 10, what's the RF value for the compound most strongly adsorbed onto the stationary phase? So we've got to work out which spot we're dealing with. And the strongest adsorption is the one that's moved the least. So it's going to be this one here. So we can calculate the RF value by going that distance there, the distance traveled by the spot divided by the distance traveled by the solvent, or we could just look at the um, relative position. So that distance there is roughly a quarter of that distance there. So the answer is actually A, 0 0.25. Um, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then obviously get your ruler out, measure that distance there and that distance there, which I have done anyway for the video. And I got roughly 1.5 centimeters for that distance. And obviously dividing by that distance there, which is six roughly, gets me that 0 0.25. Number 11, we just need to look at the spectrum and see which bonds have caused some key absorption. So the first one is this one here. That's the OH bond uh, of an alcohol. It's not a carboxylic acid. It's in the wrong place and it's not broad enough. The other one is this one here, C double bond O. So we're looking for a molecule that's got both of these bonds in and hopefully you can see that it is D. Moving on to number 12, so we need to look at the structural formula to see if these uh, molecules can generate these fragments at the various M over Z values. So there's the answer B, just quickly explain it. Both can generate CH3+, plus. so there and there. B is the answer because only propanol can generate either a C2H5 plus fragment or a CHO fragment. Both of those are 29. M over Z43, so that's that part in propanol and this part in propanone. And they can both generate M over Z58 because they both have an MR of 58. Moving on to number 13, so you can see the answer is B. So why is that? Well, um, molecule one has one, two, three, four carbon environments. So we've got that line of symmetry down there. So everything either side is equivalent. In two, we've got no line of symmetry, but we've only got four carbons. So all are different. So four um, peaks, four environments. Number three, we've got basically two lines of symmetry. We've got this one and this one. So they're equivalent to each other they're equivalent to each other and these are all equivalent to each other so only three environments in that one so b was the answer one and two only number 14 let's just test to see which of these statements are correct so the enthalpy change of hydrogenation is more exothermic than expected that's not right because it's less exothermic than expected benzene only reacts with bromine in the presence of halogen carrier that's correct and the carbon-carbon bonds all have the same length is also correct. So two and three only, C. And finally, which of these compounds can react with sodium hydroxide? So one can and you get ONA on that part there. Um, number two can as well because you end up with COONA. And three can as well because you get CH2OH, so all three, so that's A.